Today we will talk about how we use Docker in our bank. Um, something about me. While you are looking at this slide, uh, I want to ask you, uh, who knows about Docker? Okay, who uses this Docker? And uh, who uses Docker in production? <laughs> really cool. Um, so I work in uh, I work in Alpha Laboratory. It's a division of Alpha Bank. We are the largest private bank in Russia. I have some social accounts. You may follow me or add to friends. And else I have own blog, mainly on Russian, but I have some English articles too. Um, this is our large monolith front-end application. This is a local host. Everything is OK on developer's machine. App deployed in production. And uh, we uh, see that encoding is broken. What's happened? So looking at the slide, developer's environment is very, very small, relatively test and production environments. Uh, maybe it has no cluster, less, less number of components, or different configuration on something else. And test environment has a similar problem, relatively production environment. And all of these environments are supported by different people from different divisions. Many actions is doing manually by guides or other sets of document. Uh, usually, we choose major technologies from top vendors. And long time, we was building large front-end applications and was deploying them on the big enterprise servers. Something like this and all version of Java is included. So what's the main problem of the big applications? They are dangerous. They are dramatically fast growing up. And one day when, we, when you um, change code in one place, nuclear explosion will sound in another. Regression, you uh, people mm, less trust to each other. And um, bureaucracy grows up. You write many, many, many regression tests, and they are slows you down. You not have 100% cover. So what if we split our big front-end applications to a set of small, which do one thing but doing it well? They would be linked among themselves with a single sign-on, like a Google Apps, such as a Mail or Maps. Small applications have less requirements. They faster deploys, and you may deploy them immediately or, or independently. Less regression test is needed. And uh, finally, you may redevelop whole application or new technology if you want. And we've launched some uh, pilot projects. In that project, we fully rechange uh, our technology stack. We started to use Node.js for UI client side and Spring Boot for our API. And we have several APIs that do a small number of things, but uh, and they have small boundaries and business context. It's like a microservices approach. For example, we have API for customer profile, for customer cards, or API for transfer money from one customer to another. And if you look into the future, we will see picture like this. We have many different components, many different artifacts with unique color and form. How we'll control, deploy, and support them? That is the question. So uh, instead of one language, we've got different technologies. Java, JavaScript, maybe Golang. And they have different deployment processes. And finally, they have different configuration management. The similar problem was in the cargo transportation in the middle of 20th of century. Uh, each customer packed their goods as it wanted. And it is, was a big problem for transportation companies. And we wanted to simplify the delivery process. And we have found solution. It was Docker. So standard shipping container 
uh, was revolutionary technology in cargo transportation. Um, it may be loaded with any type of goods and can be loaded, unloaded, and stacked efficiently and safely. Docker containers do the same things, and if we look at the picture again, we see that Docker is, equalizes our components. And for external observer, uh, these components as like as two peas. May it's very cool thing, and maybe you ask me why. So it's a high time to talk about benefits that we've got. The first, uh, we have unified format for delivery of anything. Doesn't matter what is inside Java, or JS, or other language or technology. The form factor and methods for work with them is still the same. And we have some hierarchy of our base images, and each image is like a pie and have all necessary components for application running. Second benefit is unified API. Docker simplifies deployment process because he has commands that controlling uh, that are controlling your containers despite of their internals, of their contents. And we can build independent artifacts, put them to the registry, take them to the, on the target server and control them on it. Uh, we minimize deployment scripts differences. We do scripts more simple. Sec next benefit is process isolation, because Docker has simple API to um, define resources that certain container can use. You may limit container CPU, memory, or disk usage. No more any enraged applications that will, which will fail your cluster. As a bonus, you may pack your application on servers more efficiently. Next benefit is prerequisites isolation. So as I said, each container has all necessary components. And you don't worry about how many versions of Java you use at the same server at the same time. But it's always not a big deal. So you may ask me what is, and I said to you that big deal is the freedom. We as the developers have a freedom of choice. We can now choose technology for business task solving. And we migrate from one technology to another without pain. We receive opportunities to permanently experiment, widely use progressive technologies uh, that keep us up to date. No technologies gap anymore. No freedom without responsibility. And we take responsibility for container contents. If containers doesn't work into production, it is not a problem of operations, vendor, or somebody else. It's a problem of team which built that container and have written scripts for deploy them. For the first time, we received DevOps ready architecture and may inject our DevOps methodology in our processes more efficiently. So, uh, we've made the decision to distribute all third-party software in containers. Because um, we know that we had planning to use a large number of new technologies for the bank. And each new technology must be supported. And we want to decrease the number of technologies that must be supported to one Docker. So we wrap any third-party technology and this technology became ours. We built more than 10 infrastructure images for third-party components, such as Elasticsearch, Nginx, Zabbix, Console, and so on. And as you may see, we shifted from proprietary software to open source, open source software. We want more freedom, and we want to control what we do more than 10 microservices images and several UI. And now we have more than 100 containers that are launched in production. Nobody will deploy and control them manually. It's crazy. So um, we need orchestration. Um, we need tool or set of tools that helps us or that make it for us. 
And uh, in the beginning, we've chosen Ansible. Uh, it's like a chef and puppet, but it has no agents. It's like a salt. And it gives to you powerful abstractions. It gives sy syntax sugar, roles, inventory files, playbooks, and even developer may write de deployment scripts very quickly. So we've written about around 15 reusable roles that set up our servers, modify Docker configuration, deploy, redeploy, uh, or undeploy any third-party software and any of our software. And for example, we have an Nginx role that is installing Nginx on all target servers. And we have two roles that are depending on Nginx role and are configuring Nginx on API and UI servers differently. We've composed our role in playbooks. Uh, each playbook can be played with inventory file that define your infrastructure, your deployment environment. And on upper level, it's very easy to understand what playbook at the slide do. So we have several hosts for login, and we want to install Elasticsearch and Kibana on it, and we have one command for install that, and difference um, is only in defining infrastructure in services names. And I asked my colleagues how much time we need to build or rebuild new deployment environment. And they asked that, and they answered that is uh, five working days. For our pilot project, we reduced that time to 10 minutes. It's really cool. And when you began to use microservices, you faced with another challenge. How microservices will find each other, how we, they will found, how they will find uh, external services, and how UI will do the same things. For this purpose, it's recommended to use special tools for discovering and configuring the, your infrastructure, so, so like as a, uh, Zookeeper, etcd, or console, and we've choose console because uh, he has all things that we needed. Uh, service discovery by HTTP and DNS, multi-data center support, health checks, agnostic for container internals, and more. For example, if you set console as a DNS server for Docker container, you can receive DNS records by service alias. And if service is, unhealth, is not healthy, it would be eliminated from DNS records. How we use them? First, different settings and external services are registered by plain Ansible scripts into console. Then all our API containers are automatically registered at console cluster. Console template listen events. And if configuration was changed, it reload Nginx and UI through DNS results, which servers has necessar have necessary API that is green, according uh, health checks, and call engines on target server. This scheme allows you to scale your containers and run them on random port, and survive, do service discovery through DNS. Um, if you are going to long journey, you must be ready that something will go wrong. And now I talk about unexpected things in our journey. So first is the fact that Docker doesn't solve environment configuration problem. If you have one container with UI and one with API and nothing else, I congratulate you, you have a problem. But we have Outworld, we have many web services with specific settings. And part of our settings should be transmitted to containers through environment variables or external configuration file. It gives you some inconvenience, and we wanted more simpler and clearer mechanism. Next uh, is the Docker registry version 1. I don't know about version 2. Maybe it hasn't problems that I faced, but all of my experience maybe uh, can be expressed in one picture. So I don't know why, but registry was always failing with very strange reason. Two times we've lost all of our images. 
and uh, sometimes it can be started with only with second try. So we've migrated to Artifactory Pro and um, we use it for, for all of our binary artifacts and doesn't have any problem with it. And sometimes we want multicast and there is no other way in Docker that an encapsulated network. And next is the fighting with logs. If you, uh, uh, if you think that you isolated your container for disk usage, thinking again. Uh, Docker with, with, um, may write logs at file that is not inside of container and it file uh, may grow up and one day you will discover that no le space left on device. So we fix that problem with log ID utilities that rotate and zip our logs. Um, we face our memory leaks with Docker process. So one time Docker occupy around four gigabytes of memory. And uh, maybe you listen that Docker loves HDD. Uh, Docker containers and images um, require more much space than uh, var or jar files. And uh, my advice, simply buy more GD for it. Or you may optimize your images, collapse run commands, beautif ra uh, builds beautiful images hierarchy, or use light Linux distributives if you can. <laughs> Monitoring is uh, one of most important things for DevOps process, and if you get, don't get feedback from your environments, you uh, cannot, uh, can't, um, you can't react on this, and uh, we not found any good out of the box solution. So we now have, uh, we now use um, engine, oh, Zabbix and C Advisor, uh, but we want more. I believe that monitoring must give feedback from not from system monitoring, not from system indicators, but but from business metrics. And now we are looking for Elasticsearch with Watcher plugin that can alert and notify you if your business metrics are broken. And at last, most important challenge for us was culture, our culture for deployment uh, products and their delivery to customers. And there is no other way instead of improve your culture, and we do it. We've started uh, writing more unit tests than ever. We started talking with our operations more than ever. And we started uh, automate everything. We don't stop on uh, reached. And we are looking for simpler and convenient solutions. Now we have um, some R&D works, and we are um, piloting methods right now. Also, we are looking at Kubernetes. Docker, as any technology, has pros and cons. And for us, it has more benefits than hers. If you don't use Docker yet, you should try it. So finally, I want to say that Docker is viable, solves many of your problems, but not all, and adds new problems to you. So <laughs> thank you, and who have a questions? about uh, your architecture um, it's how how do how to they like uh, how far you think you can decompose the architecture into like docker containers and microservices how far it will be and what will be at one point not containerizable to your mind okay uh, now we are piloting our um, piloting have uh, doing experiments and now we are decomposing our front-end applications that uh, was written on uh, classic G G2E technology such as the GSF. And uh, we have more core systems, we have ESB, and uh, uh, we are not dockerized it yet. So maybe in the light future uh, we do it, we will do it, but not now. Okay. Right time for one more question about Docker. Yeah, right here. Hello. Um, you think in in this kind of uh, architecture, multi multi service um, microservice architecture, there's still a place for uh, ASB. Um, 
what may you repeat your questions well uh, what, what i'm trying to say is that uh, for example lots of of of, comp, uh, of um, uh, banks um, have um, have uh, um, are using uh, infrastructures with the enterprise service bus uh, do you think yes, with this uh, with this kind of approach of small containers there's still a place for uh, an enterprise service bus uh, so um, look we have pilot projects and I said it again. So we have ESBs at the core bank systems and we can't change it simply. So uh, now we are building our microservice architecture uh, that may be maybe uh, will replace current system, but I don't know. 